Welcome to another session on our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Berquist, your host today, as we are delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our webinars are designed for you as the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people or projects, teams, or even a company or business. We select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. Our webinar is just shy of one hour, and at the half hour mark, we're gonna be answering any questions that you've submitted online during the presentation portion of our webinar. The focus and title of our webinar today is a pretty hot topic for most of us as professional women, and that is from profits to productivity, and we all want to be more productive. I'm also excited to introduce our thought leader today. She is a gem. She loves baseball. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Deanna Potter, who is with the Center for Organization Effectiveness. She is all out dynamo, but she has had 20 years of experience, not only in individual coaching, but group training, designed to help professionals improve skills and implement systems that drive results. Deanna is a business planning expert, speaker, coach, author, and trainer, and she offers practical, real-life solutions. Deanna also understands the demands and importance of balancing an organization's key performance object objectives against the welfare of the individuals within the organization. She has so much more to her bio and background, but we always get rave results when Deanna does any kind of information for our association. So, Miss Deanna Potter, Will you please say hello to all of our attendees? And my dear, this is all you on our webinar at this point. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for that wonderful welcome. And thank you for not, you know, boring them with all of the bio. I think they get a nice <laughs> taste of who I am. And I'm just really We'd have been here all day. Yeah. We'd have been here all day with all of your background. Know that. Or, or just because I've had enough years on this planet at this point, right? <laughs> so thank you so much for the introduction, and I'm very excited to be here today. You know, um, to know me is to know I love talking profits, and I love productivity. It's one of my favorite words, and my team here in the office, you know, anytime I go, come on, let's, we got to be productive today, they all kind of cringe, because I don't think that's a word that everybody loves, but I really do have a passion around it. And uh, for me, having a productive day is having a good day. And for some people, their adjectives might be different. Oh, to have a fun day or a relaxing day or have a, a, a day that flows. My accountability partner likes to say, I'm going to have a day that flows. Not for me. I love having a productive day. That's what kind of curls my toes. Um, so, and I think, I do think that there's a lot of us uh, in this world that are trying to be more productive. And what that means is we're trying to kind of squeeze more time out of our days, trying to find more ways to fit more in. My grandmother used to say 10 pounds of sugar in a five pound bag. You know, there's a lot more that we need to do. And yet uh, there's not a lot more uh, time to do it in. Our lives are becoming busier and busier. So what I'm hoping to do today is I'm going to share um, with all of you some of the things that I have uh, come across through my many years on this earth. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to talk a lot about some strategies and techniques and really what it means to be prosperous, not just profitable, um, and really productive. And that is whether or not um, you are an individual that is in a business that is your own business. Um, so whether you are are the business or you are part of the business and I think that that's really important that distinction um, if you are uh, a nonprofit um, or you are in the public sector or you are a member of a team in a corporate environment I don't want you to be turned off by the word profit because that may not be a common word in your environment and that's why I really want you to be comfortable with the idea of having a prosperous because we're going to talk about some key areas right now, and those key areas really can be transferred into your world and your language. And I really think that that's important because at the end of the day, there are five key fundamental areas of focus that I have learned over the years in working with a wide variety of professionals that really we all end up kind of coming back to. And I'm going to share those with you because I find that when focused upon, those really end up driving results. 
And those really end up being the pieces that high performers really um, find and know to be um, the, the sweet spot, those, those areas that really drive success. And at the end of the day, I think we all get up wanting to feel good and feel purpose and feel successful, or we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So, um, you know, that's what I'm going to do today is I'm going to hopefully share with you guys those areas and, and help you reflect on where are you strongest and maybe where do you need to revisit and kind of take a look and say, you know what, I've, I've drifted a little here and maybe I need to take a look and see what's going on there and, and revisit it again. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to start us off by kind of revisiting this question. What ROI are you aiming for in whatever you do? What is that return on investment? Because at the end of the day, we've all heard this over and over again. Your time is really the most valuable thing that you have. And I have said many, uh, many uh, time, <laughs> often, no pun intended, as I've stood amongst um, executive teams or uh, seminars and workshops, we all have the same amount of it, whether it's you, me, uh, Beyonce, uh, you know, <laughs> you name it, doesn't matter how much money we have or how famous we are or how humble <laughs> we are, we all have the same amount of time. And we need to be all very uh, conscientious around what are we aiming for? What's the return we're looking for? The definition of success for you and for me and for uh, Joe and Sally and Bob and Shannon, everybody's got different ideas of what they're trying to achieve. And none of them are right or wrong. They are all unique to who we are. And I have learned over the years that what I thought I was going for at 20 versus 30 versus 40 changes. And I'm sure it's going to change throughout the remainder of my life. Um, and that's great. It is absolutely, I think, the way it should be. Therefore, this is something that you need to go back, I think, and continue to look at. And if you are part of a team or you have your own business, this is something you're going to continue to value. And there's going to come a time when you are going to have to ask yourself, what am I aiming for and what's the goal right now? So really, the reason I ask you this is, what is it for you right now? Are you in search of a promotion? Are you looking for market share? Maybe it's a raise. Maybe you need to hire staff on your team or in your business. Maybe you've decided it's time to launch a new product. Or maybe you're at a stage where it's about succession planning. Maybe this is about trying to find that right exit plan. Whatever it is, I ask you this because you need to know what's next. What's next? And once you know what's next, that's when you can start to ask yourself, what plan should be in place? How do I get there? Now, I know recently I had a conversation with a really smart lady and we talked about the fact that plans, 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 you know, business plans, operation plans, strategic plans, all kinds of different plans. Well, I'm going to add to it, but I like this plan best because I created it and I named it and I call it a profit plan. And the reason I call it a profit plan, because it gets back to those very distinctive five categories that I originally alluded to in the beginning. And again, a reminder to my friends out there who are listening, who don't have their own business. This can be your prosperous plan, your profitability plan, whatever brings that, that um, prosperity to your life, that, 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 that surge of this is what I'm needing and wanting, and this is where my eye's on the ball right now. It really comes down to five key areas. And these areas are, first and foremost, marketing. Now, someone's listening right now who's sitting maybe in a cubicle on a regular basis, maybe in a corporation or maybe in a public sector environment going, marketing, how on earth does marketing fit my life and my, my vision right now? I'm a corporate woman. Bear with me, I promise I'm gonna get you there, okay? Marketing first and foremost. Second, lead generation. Third, we're looking at systems, okay? And I'm gonna give you definitions behind all of these. Fourth is internal operations, anything that the outside world doesn't see about your plan. And then lastly, the financials, the actual money behind it all. These five areas for years and years, 
proven over and over again. Always fall to be the basics, the fundamentals, the foundations of any good plan. I have yet to find an individual who hasn't sat with me and said, here's the area where I'm struggling and I haven't been able to very safely and solidly place it into one of these five areas. So as we sit here and we talk about wherever you're at, where, what your environment looks like, let's take a look at what it would look like in marketing. And these are in a particular order for a reason. So before we can generate or fill a need, which is a lead, or we can set up a system to manage that, we need to go out there and market, bring in something, bring in what we're looking for. So if you're a business owner, this might make easy sense to you or even someone on the outside looking in. Well, of course, if they own a business or I own a business, it is the actual marketing plan. Might include my website, might be how I interact in social media or maybe some promotions and different, you know, buy one, get one freeze and how I'm going to bring leads in the door. This makes very clear, easy sense. But Deanna, what about me? I'm that corporate person. Guess what? Any day that you get dressed, get in that car and drive out to your job, you yourself are the product or the service. You are marketing yourself on a regular basis. So the question becomes, what are you saying about your professional brand? How are you self-promoting in the workplace? What kind of projects or opportunities have you decided to participate in or are you trying to take advantage of? You know, we often, we read a lot and we hear a lot about how women show up in the workplace and how we promote ourselves, how we either try to slide in and act more like men or should we be ourselves. There's a lot of discussion around that. Um, I'm not saying that I'm here to have that. That's another webinar, you know, where you land on that one. But the question does become, what is your professional brand? How do people see you? When I coach individuals, I will sometimes, depending on what we're coaching for, tell them, you know what, do this exercise. Take advantage of this opportunity to reach out to 15 individuals, 10 to 15 individuals that you work with on a regular basis. And maybe it's somebody you've worked with in the past or somebody you work with now from a peer perspective, uh, individuals maybe you manage or people who have managed you, and send an email and the subject line says literally 60 seconds of your time. That's the subject line. And then it goes on to say, I'm working on my professional brand. Will you please provide me with three words, just three words, Adjectives that describe what you believe it's like to work with me or the impression I give in the workplace. I worked with a woman who was just an amazing producer. She was sharp in her environment. She was very detail oriented. She had good knowledge. She uh, was thorough, all of those type of things. And you gotta figure if you get, let's say 10 people to respond and they give you three words each, that's 30 different adjectives as to what your professional brand is. When she got the feedback from the exercise, she had a really nice list of descriptors around what she did well. And when we went over it during her coaching session, I remember her turning to me and saying, wow, do they think I'm a robot? And it was very interesting because it showed her that although everything on there was very positive, it showed she was very capable, uh, very uh, good, strong, a good producer in her role, she realized very clearly that if she wanted to move up the corporate ladder and flourish as a leader, she was going to have to learn how to develop and really start to build on her personal, uh, her interpersonal skills with people, her people skills. She was strong technically, but when it came to her relationship building skills, she lacked. She lacked. So this whole marketing idea is not just about marketing to the public or marketing to customers. It's about brand recognition. And this can absolutely be part of a plan that you develop for yourself, even if you're not a business owner. So there's marketing. Let's keep moving along here. And let's talk a little bit about the next piece, and that's lead generation. So again, from a business perspective, if you are a business owner, this can be any way in which you bring a lead into your business. So do you believe and are you comfortable with business networking? 
If so, then I want you to be very thorough about your research because not all business networking groups are created equal. Determine what time of the day are you good? Are you a BNI person who likes 7 a.m. every week with very formal structures and expectations around networking? Or are you more of a lunchtime person? And is it more of a social along with uh, business-based networking and learning opportunities? Uh, how about direct buying? Is that something that appeals to you? Are you good at conferences? And do you like going to conventions and shows? And how about the referral-based relationships, uh, strategic partnerships, and building power partners? These are all part about, of building a lead generation plan. Now let's get back over to my uh, more of a corporate environment or uh, maybe public sector environment. The question becomes this, what kind of leads are you looking for? Now that might confuse some people, but I want you to think about the challenges you deal with in your world. What are you looking for? Are you looking for, maybe you run a staff and you've lost one of the most critical people on your team. Are you looking to try to fill positions? How about software systems where, gosh, you just know that your team could become more efficient and more productive if you had a good project management system and you really don't know where to look. So you're looking for some tips and tricks on efficiencies. And maybe you are looking for some connections out in the community and out in the industry. So maybe you too are looking for some networking opportunities and you're not sure where to go because you're not an independent business owner and you don't get those opportunities coming in and working a nine to five. So these are all areas of opportunities for you to also build into your plan to identify what that would look like. So now we've kind of got a marketing idea, some lead generations, and guess what? We need some systems. I will often work with a person and I'll do some coaching and help them create this plan. Everybody has a different pain point. I can sometimes get somebody who clearly says, you know what, I'm lacking leads, I need more business. Okay, fine, we can work on that. But I do run into that person who will say, gosh, I am drowning in leads. I got lots of leads that are falling through the cracks because I lack the systems to really support the business. So if you are a business owner, right off the bat, this could be your schedule calendaring systems, being able to coordinate all of the appointments and the, the clients and the lead generation activities. But this second one on the list is usually the one I'm having a lot of conversation with people on, and that's a CRM system. For those who don't know what that is, that's a customer relationship management system. You may have heard uh, whispers in the hallways about things like Salesforce or Infusionsoft or a variety of other ones that are out there. There's a different size fit for every business, and it's not a quick decision. It takes research. You want to make sure you're picking the one that works for you. You may have industry software that's specific to whatever your industry is, and I believe strongly in a task management system that covers your to-dos, as well as uh, really streamlining your email systems. So these are all very important, and some of these do cross over. Our, uh, our powerful uh, leading women leaders on the other side of the uh, uh, fence that are in corporate or, uh, you know, pushing the clock from nine to five, they too struggle with all of these uh, needs to be organized and stay on top of things. I did a conference for a group of women, executive uh, uh, women, who manage, these women in this room were responsible for five calendars and worked in the public sector where they were dealing with emergency services. So uh, some real big responsibilities. Uh, talk about, I, I get overwhelmed with just my one calendar. I couldn't imagine being responsible for mine and four additional calendars of very high level important people. Very, very challenging. Project management systems, again, more industry software. There's a lot of things out there and if you, A, don't have the right system, or even if you do, but you don't know it well, and you don't have the training, and you don't have the connection to it, then it's useless. It's really important to make sure in your plan that you've got the right objectives and goals written. All right, so we're halfway through here. Last two areas after systems. Internal operations. So this one's always one that kind of baffles people. Everybody goes, what's internal operations? It's everything behind the scenes. If you're in an industry and you are looking to renew a certification, increase your education, 
uh, keep up with your competition. Uh, Want to make sure that if you're headed down a career path and you know that additional education or learning something more is going to help you to head down a row, uh, road that's going to allow you to eventually increase income, get better exposure, allow yourself to promote, put yourself in a position that's going to allow you to be more marketable, anything along those lines, that would be internal operations. How about those of you who own businesses and it is time to finally hire staff? Hiring staff is a behind the scenes adventure, we'll call it, right? Uh, that takes a lot of guts, takes a lot of time, takes a lot of energy, takes a lot of research. Any of those type of things is going to fall under internal operations. So business owners, hiring staff, industry updates, identifying power partners, education and certification. And for us uh, corporate ladies, talent development, talent development, uh, industry updates, mentoring others and finding a mentor, and then training and development. These are great examples of internal operations. And then lastly, oh, look at that crack. The financials. Financials is a blah word. I usually call this profits, but I don't want to, again, disconnect any of you who maybe don't feel comfortable with that word and aren't in love with it the way I am. So your financials are anything with a dollar sign attached to it. And I really want you to think outside the box here. So for my business owners, you better, better, better be running your business like a business. That's a whole nother segment of uh, workshop and training that I do. Please tell me that you run on a profit and loss statement, that you know your balance sheet, and you are paying your quarterly installments. Because the last thing you need to be doing is becoming too close, intimate, and personal with Uncle Sam. That is running your business like a business, being able to know where you stand. You should have income goals that are tied to production. If you sell a widget, you should know how many widgets you need in order to cover your bills. You should be running off of a budget, both in your personal and your business. You should know how many contacts and leads you need. You should know your conversion rate. This is some serious stuff here, okay? And for my other wonderful people on the other side of the business world. You know what? That company is relying on you to understand how it runs. So you need to know your company stats because if you really do want to thrive in a corporation or in an organization, then they're looking for the best of the best to understand how that organization runs. In addition to understanding how the company runs, you need to know your performance measurements and you need to be asking yourself, what did I do today, yesterday, and this last week? And did I spend an 80% of my time working on the items that tie back to my performance review? Because if you're not, then you need to assess how you're spending your time. What are your salary objectives? Do you work on raises and bonuses? Exactly how do you get where you're going? And no, it's not all about the almighty dollar, but let's be honest, we work uh, and live in a society that basically runs on a 90 day cycle. And depending on where your reserves are or are not, if anything happened, your car payment, your mortgage payment, your rent payment, all runs on a 90 day cycle. And after 90 days of not making your payment, somebody will come and knock in. So I really encourage you to be able to understand how the numbers run and how things operate. Because that is how we live. This is how it all works. When I remember in my 20s before online banking and all the bills would come and it was a hefty stack, you know, you don't realize it. Now we click our way through bill pay and it just says, would you like us to pay all these? And we say yes. But I used to sit down at the first of the month and with the stamps and envelopes and we pay our bills and if we did it as a young couple together and I would have to even put the stamps on the envelopes. And I would have those envelopes all paid and sealed and I would get so excited. I had such a sense of fulfillment. He got depressed. I got excited because he just felt like, wow, look at all that. And I always felt like the monkey was off my back for another month. They don't own me for a whole nother month. It was like, I'm done with you. You stay away. I did it. It's all in how you look at it. So how do you choose to look at it? Would you rather be in denial and not know, 
or do you want to know every bit of it so you know where you're at, how the game's being played, and what the score is? I encourage you to know how the score is. So these are the five areas that are on your profit plan. Nowhere did I mention innovation, and when I say innovation, I mean the next greatest, hottest, best idea. Innovation absolutely, I think, is critical to future success. I think you should always take the time and spend the time there. I think you should um, block time to ideate with the best people on your team, to get together with other solopreneurs, to share ideas, to really invest in that. But I will tell you, innovation is not going to um, take your business to that final next level and that I believe that the foundations and the fundamentals are what's going to continue to build steady success. It's going to help you soar. See, look at that. Just like that. So, <laughs> I believe on the concept of success. And when it comes to that concept of success, what I want all of you to believe in is that you can decide what it is for you at the end of the day. That's what this is all about. Um, and I also believe on, uh, you know, being prompt and timely. And since I put it in, I believe about three minutes of the half hour mark, um, I am going to go ahead and open this up for questions now. Um, I can do a lot at you guys in 30 minutes. So, um, you know, let's go for it. And, and uh, we'll see what time I got. Well, that was a lot in a short amount of time, girl. So thank you for that. I think we got we got quite a few questions. So I'm kind of like chuckling going, whoo, there's a lot here. And I, you know, what I love is, Deanna, that you made the distinction between business owner versus, let's say, career woman, right? Because when you work for somebody else, we have quite a few questions on that, believe it or not. And here's one of the questions. Um, so I'm going to try to read this as much as I can. This is a career woman. It says, I'm tasked with bringing in new clients, but I have no access to the budget. Hmm. How do I approach my manager to, this, this is the question, how do I approach my manager to see the budget? Yeah, so here's the deal. That's a really great question because it's kind of like uh, you're tasked with achievement without having any independence or control over, um, you know, the direction in some ways. Um, and that's a tough, tough, tough position to be in. Uh, so here's what I do. Chances are, I'm, I'm going to make some assumptions here. I'm going to assume that you've asked and that when you've asked, you've come in from an aspect of, um, the reason why or the limitations you're experiencing because they're the reason that they're probably not wanting to show you the budget is that the budget in its totality is going to show all kinds of stuff and that's going to include salaries and uh, expenses and where money's being spent and you know they're going to be fearful of all of that so um, what I would do is this instead of asking to see the budget I would make a proposal as to what you really want. Seeing the budget isn't really gonna solve your problem. What's gonna solve your problem is figuring out what do you want? Do you want funds and what do you want the funds for? How are they gonna be used and what benefit are they gonna return? So what I might say is I would say, okay, I would like to do a client appreciation event for my top 10 current A plus clients. And during the client appreciation event, I would like to set it up so that it's, un I would like to set it up so that they bring their best buddy and I get to thank them and also highlight our services to another potential new client. And I would like to do this at a such and such venue. It'll cost approximately a thousand dollars. This is what I'd like to do for follow up. Here's what I'd like. I would like to, I would go to them and ask what I want to do as a lead generating revenue. Um, and I would describe what I want and ask for the dollar amount versus, hey, I'd like to see the budget. Get to yeah. what the action items will be and what the return's gonna be on trying to bring in clients or what the purpose is. Because I think that too often, most organizations are going to be very protective about showing all the little nitty gritties around where the money is and where it's going. It, it's just not a very comfortable place for most leaders and leadership teams. So that's a thought. It's interesting. That was really, you know, Deanna, that's interesting because here's another comment, not so much a question, but kind of like ties into that is someone else said, you know, I'm also not in charge of the budget and in capital letters, my budget keeps getting cut, you know, and then that's mm -hmm. another whole issue, which is when it's being cut. But, you know, I think for all of us, the whole idea is to try to work, 
you know, as effectively as we can with the limited resources. But any thoughts on that? Because it's really not a question. It was more of a comment. Yeah. Okay. It's so I'm, I'm about to not be liked very much, but I'm going to push back a little bit because <laughs> I am. Because when, I, when I was, you know, my own business owner, you know, there were months, but there was no freaking budget. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. It's like the lead generation mm -hmm. still had to happen, but revenue and income was low. So it was all of a sudden, it was a lot of face to face. Hey, can I buy you a coffee? Um, here are, I used to do what were called, you know, items of value where I would show up with little marketing items and they were like literally like a 99 cent chapstick and it would, or like a, I don't know, something like a sunscreen and it would say, don't get burned by the wrong you know, rep or whatever. You know, it's like, I was, I was very creative in my marketing and it was a lot of face to face quality time or, you know, because the money wasn't there. And when it's not there, you start to really become creative and you invest in who you are and the relationship. Now, I have no idea what industry they're in. Maybe they're selling, you know, like Rolls Royces and those clients aren't going to want a chapstick. I get it. But <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, sometimes, well, you never know. You never know. You never know. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, some months it wasn't there and some months you still went out and you made the contacts and you made the touches and you budgeted and you, you did it. Even when the marketing budget was was very low during times when you know the market wasn't so hot so and here's what I would do I'll tell you right now I would be very I would walk in with and I'm th these individuals may very well already be doing this so again I'm speaking very blind but I would have a marketing plan that obviously said you know here's what I plan to do here's what I'm going to do and you know what I understand that it's tight and it's this but if I'm bringing in and delivering on these results and I want a bump by an extra five hundred dollars a month or whatever it is so you know make them reward the efforts that are out there and you know what there will always be a struggle between asking for what you want and then delivering on it unfortunately that's just part of that whole sales piece and it really is lousy that's my nicest way of putting it Look. <laughs> on a I, don't think it, I don't think anyone will hate you I think that was pretty well said well said my dear I like that yeah. you know um, here's another one and this is another career woman and she's saying I'm looking to transition. Um, uh, how, where do I go for networking? And I've been to chambers of commerce, not my, not my favorite place. So th that's what I have as the question. So where should I go for networking? I think is the question. Yes. Okay. So thank you for such a wonderful question. Um, so I first am going to tell you how I would approach your the process and then I'm going to tell you my my big bias answer so first off I just did a keynote in San Luis Obispo three days ago on this exact topic here's the deal um, networking groups are not all created equal and you need to decide first off what works for you because if you try to put yourself into a group that does not suit who you are then it, you, it won't get anything out of it. So I first recommend that you figure out what you are, where you're in a transition and where do you, what are you trying to transition into? And if you absolutely don't know at all, like, do you want another job? Do you want to open in your own business? Do you, what are you transitioning into? What's the objective? And if you literally in the dark and you have absolutely no idea, um, then you're going to be going to a lot of different groups because something's going to have to click. There's going to be a sign from the universe that puts you in some sort of a direction. But if you have an idea, that's going to be your first piece. Then secondly, um, you, I would be finding out, like I had alluded to during the webinar, are you a morning person? Are you a lunchtime person? Do you like nighttime networking? Do you like mandatory structure where there's and you have to hand out referrals? Um, uh, are you into only one person per industry or do you believe, you know, the more the merrier? Um, do you want to be encouraged and required to give presentations or do you want to sit back and kind of be able to observe and kind of feel things out? There's all kinds of different variations when it comes to networking events. Uh, I argue that a book club can be a networking event because you're around people. Could you find a connection and a resource to something you're looking for from your weekly book club? Sure you could. But are you probably better off going to a more organized, structured, uh, industry-based group that meets over a networking breakfast? Perhaps. So there's going to be a lot of different things for you to consider, first of all. 
Secondly, I can tell you that um, in my past, before I became the strategic communications manager here at the center, when I owned my own business, business networking was a huge part of what I did. And I was affiliated with seven different networking groups on a monthly basis. There were a wide variety. I chose them for very specific reasons. I knew what type of business I was going to obtain and the different income levels of the individuals in the different industries. I was very purposeful about what I went for and where and who I was interacting with. When I transitioned out of that and I uh, went back into my corporate position here, I have stayed affiliated with two of them. And now really I'm only spending most of my time with one. And it's biased, but I'm with Connected Women of Influence. And um, I am with the group because I find it to be very professional, very supportive, very knowledgeable. And I have known personally many women who are in a process of transition who have found wonderful support and insights during that transition. So I hope that answers your question. Wow. Well, I'll say awesome answer there. Like talking about connected women of influence, but I'm a little, I'm a little attached to it. I got to say, but you know, it is a good question. But hold on. I need to put a disclaimer that I get paid nothing for that endorsement. <laughs> The, the zero dollars are coming your way, Deanna. But, you know, if I can add to that, I know, because, you know, when I was in banking, it was like, you know, I knew I wanted to get out there, but where do you go? And some hit the mark, some didn't. For me, when I first started networking, and I'm just going to date myself, in the early 90s, which is seriously scary. But, uh, you know, one of the places and things I would do for just if I can add one piece of color, and that is, if you're thinking of getting out there, it starts with one step, right? But a really good place to start is that if you're thinking you're going to make a transition or you just want to be connected outside your own corporate environment, one really great tool to do is, you know, most major metropolitan areas have some sort of a something that they keep track of all the different ongoing events in the community for the business community. But one, if they don't, because we have, this, you know, attendees all over and that, that is look up and put into Google or whatever you're looking up, but I love Google. So you look up and put like financial services trade association or camera, camera, takers association just something that has associations or trade group after it and you'd be really surprised how many groups there are for different things going on whether you want to interact with other marketing people or change industries or you're thinking of starting a business or you want to elevate your expertise somehow there's something going on for everybody i just wanted to throw that in so anyway yes. that's my two cents Woo, yes. that's my contribution yes. well, um, I, here's a question I happen to know that you yeah, go ahead the Association of Associations, as you like to say. <laughs> I do like to say. And yes, there are. It's called ASAE. And so for any of you, but that's where I always start if I'm going to start a business. It's what I recommend to clients. And it's what has worked very well for me over the years of just finding a trade group of like-minded people, whether it's an industry sector, a, you know, certain business niche or hobbies. You know, I mean, there's meetups and stuff like that, which is another whole kind of crazy. But if we talk about networking, we need to do that as a whole other webinar, right, Deanna? Yes, I, yes, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's, um, here's one question we have is how do I promote myself inside my company? So, you, you know, I think it comes from when you were talking about yeah. the self-promotion and the marketing for individuals. Yeah, you know, I really think that it starts with just the language we use, especially as women. Um, you know, we are very, we are not a good gender at accepting compliments or taking ownership over the things we do. We're very quick to go to make it as if it's no big deal, where our male counterparts are really proud of themselves. Um, they just, they're really good at the honor, and God bless them. Yes, yeah. they are. They are, and we need to like, it, it's really good for them, and we need to make it good for us. And we need to have yeah. others' backs. We need to get better at recognizing each other and having each other in the sisterhood of being able to say, you know what, I just wanted to point out to the group that, you know, uh, Michelle did an outstanding job at uh, the summary on last week's project, and Michelle, I just wanted to recognize you and say, really nice write-up. And guess what? The next week, Michelle needs to do the same for Deanna. If we need to start there even, 
Now, I am very clear on the fact that there is some cattiness and some insecurities and some, we feel threatened by each other, even as women. So we need to be okay with saying, um, just real quick, before we wrap up, I wanted to make sure everybody got a copy of the memo I sent out wrapping up the project. I wanted to make sure, was that clear and did everybody, um, was that good for you guys? Okay, please let me know if next time I can do anything different. I just wanted to make sure everybody got that and it, you know, it was helpful. It's okay that in a way was a little self-promotion, but with a little love and compassion and courtesy. Do you follow me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That wasn't hard. That's good. That wasn't hard at all. Well, I think the whole self-promotion thing would be a big one for us to do as a webinar. And I, you know, I got to say, just because of some of the men I interviewed, you know, self-promotion can be, we don't have to always be on, right, for self-promotion. But I look at it as kind of like thinking at every, every once an occasion you taught, you lob out a little self-promotion, right? I mean, if you're in front of the right people and you just kind of like somehow strategically through the conversation, show, tell people how you're all that. Now there's the way you do it, which will either be well received and it might be uncomfortable, but I do think there's ways strategically to be able to, you know, be in front of the right people, walk the halls where hang where senior management is, you know, think where you're not having access to and interaction and communication and be visible in those areas, you know, ask to take on more projects. It's that's like, what, you know, right. talk about your results, right? I mean, yes. go ahead. Sorry. I, this is your thing, but I just like, Oh my God, there's so much you can do. Yes. And no, but that was a great point. And I, that is one I wanted to circle back to, you know, when you see an opportunity, a project coming around or something you're interested in, do not wait for your boss to turn to you and place you on it. Yeah. Ask about it. I sit with my boss. We debrief on projects and so forth. And if something that we're debriefing on where we would normally appoint someone, I just recently in the last few weeks said, I got to tell you, this work really speaks to me. I really like the idea of this work. And I, I, and I was very open and said, listen, if you don't think I'm the right person, that's fine. If you got somebody else in mind, that's okay. But I just want to speak up and say, I love this. And I'd love, I would love to be appointed to this. It's okay to say so, but you got to speak up. If you think that they're going to think of you, it's not because that maybe you wouldn't be a great person, but guess what? There's 15 other things on their mind, ugh, 200 more emails that came through that inbox. And they're just not making the connection sometimes because they pulled out your regular workload and you're two and a half people deep in your own stuff. And if you have an interest, you got to speak up. Bam. That's where we'll stay. You know, we're not done yet, but I, yeah. I think that's awesome, you know, and, and yeah. the whole self-promotion thing, seriously, that is a webinar on its own. And I took a note on that one. Um, here's another question. It's like, can you talk a little bit more about what ROI are you aiming for? I'm confused. So I'm not sure if they, on, on that one, that's the question, you know, more of what, what, what does that mean? I, yeah. I'm not real sure, Deanna. Any thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, and, and uh, excellent, thank you for asking. So, you know, we keep thinking that we, there are things that we want, and really we are investing ourselves in all these different areas. We spread ourselves too thin. It's about becoming really ultra clear on what is our biggest in return that we want. What is it? Are you all about, you know what, this year I want the raise. I need the more money. This year, for me, it's about the transition. I want out of this job, I want into another job. That's what it is. For me, this year, it's about launching a new product line in my business. What is that big, big return? And if you're investing all of your resources, and your time, and your energy, where is it always at the end filtering back into that one thing? So when I went down that, that list on that slide, is it the promotion? Because there's a difference between a promotion and a raise. Do we all understand that? <laughs> you, yeah. can, you can get a title and get no money. You can get a lot more responsibility and not make anything. Or in some situations, my husband recently being one of them, you know, he got a promotion and he's barely making more than the people that he's uh, leaving right now because there's unions involved with where he's at. The union that he just left, they just fought for a raise. So uh, who knows what can happen depending on the world you work in. Is it, is it succession plan? Guess what? I want to succession plan my way out. I want out. I'm done. So what is it? And where are you investing that time and that energy? If you're going to build your plan, all the things in that plan should be filtering back to that one, that one piece. Does like that it. Like it. 
here's, here's a good, couple final questions, but, you know, we still have them coming in. It's like, how do I figure out what's most important to start with of the five areas? Yeah, that's a big one. Wow. Do you got five hours? <laughs> um, so I did allude to the fact that they're in order for a reason. You know, there mm -hmm. is an order to it. Um, so really, I would be starting at, if you, are, if you feel as though you kind of need a whole overhaul or it's the first time you're going to sit down and create your plan, I'd start it, I'd start at marketing. And I'd work from marketing to lead generation to systems. I'd go in the order that they're listed if you're starting for your very first time. So I would talk about how do I, if I'm in, if I'm a career woman, which I like that terminology better, if I'm a career woman. Um, so how do I show up every day? What is my brand? What do I want my, uh, my, what am I trying to say about myself in this environment? And how is that com communication about myself feeding back to that one thing I'm trying to do? Okay. Um, and what do I need to change about it? What, what do I, what additional things do I want to do in order to continue to shape mold or change it? So that might be a good thing to look at. If I'm uh, running my own business, there's lots of things that go in there. So what is, I need a marketing plan. And if I don't have one, what needs to go into it? And how is that marketing plan feeding my leads, my profits, my financial goals? So I'd start at marketing. And then I'd go to the next piece, which is the lead generation. If I own my own business, then how is my marketing plan supporting the leads that I need? How many leads do I need? in order to support my income goals, my objectives, my finances. If I'm a career woman, then what type of leads am I looking for? If I'm trying to get that promotion, then do I need some support? Do I need a mentor? Do I need some knowledge? Do I need some, what type of, what type of referrals, leads, and support am I looking for in order to place me in the right position so that when the position opens or when I'm about ready to interview or when, you know, the transfer comes up for the other department, I'm in the best position possible. After lead generation, I would go to systems and I'd be looking at, okay, what are my systems right now that are in place? Are they strong and are they solid? And if they're not, then what needs to change about that? How well organized am I? And might I say on a side note, organization is a myth. It's not about being organized, it's about being disciplined. It's about being disciplined, okay? I like that word. Nobody is naturally organized. There are people who have simply made themselves disciplined enough so that they are organized in their daily operations. That's all it is. I want you to all think about that for a minute. <laughs> so anyways, but really, you know, what kind of systems do I need to put in place? Do I need to get better with, um, you know, managing my tasks, managing my calendar? Or do I have the right software in my business? Or do I need to get, you know, more responsible so I'm showing up to meetings on time and I'm following up after uh, I speak to somebody with my emails and, you know, whatever the case may be. And then from the systems I would go to internally, what do I need to work on? Do I need a better knowledge about my industry? Do I need to hire staff in my business? And then the last one I'd go to would be the financials. And, that would and, you know, I wanted to add, I wanted to add to the financials because I know as a business owner, you know, there's so many things you can track that's beyond your financials. You know, I mean, that was one of the things in some of the interviews I did with men that just shared, you know, everything is about stats, percentages, you know, numbers. It doesn't have to be financials with the dollar sign because I know you said that. But what are your thoughts where, at least for me, you know, we used to track how many daily calls we made, you know, um, sales, those kind of like hash marks. I mean, there's activity that could be measured, which could be a benchmark or key performance indicators, right, that kind of get you to the lead versus lag times. Because I feel like financials are so past. Yep. Even though we need to pay attention to them, what are your thoughts on that? That's this is my question, and that's mine. Yeah. Oh, I could. I 100% uh, agree with you. So let me tell you that when I had uh, one of my businesses years ago, part of my lead generation plan was uh, personal notes. I wrote a lot of personal notes. I believed in that personal touch. And I will tell you, my strongest year, I wrote 1,652 personal notes, handwritten personal notes that got you kept track. Oh my Absolutely. God. I tracked you kept track. Notes. I tracked the number of personal phone calls I made to check in with my clients. I wow. tracked I tracked everything because you can't 
here's something that's really important for people to understand, especially if you own your own business and you get frustrated with when the leads are coming and when they're not. You can control the activities. You can't always control the results. You have to trust your systems. You have to believe that the activities that you're doing and the, you're going out there, the number of lunches you're having, the number of networking groups you're going to, the number of personal notes you're sending out, the number of email blasts, how many social media posts you're making, all of these activities, you have to trust in the law of large numbers. And you have to believe that you, the, the, the consistency, you got to believe in timeliness and consistency. And so, yeah, I knew exactly what, how much activity I was doing because when I could look at my charts and I knew that when my activity was solid, 90 days later, my income followed. And when my leads were, were low, I could go back 90 days prior and I could see that I slacked on my activities. It was always a connection. Wow. Wow. So, yes, Powerful. I, I agree. Absolutely. Hey, you know, here's another question. I have um, 10 employees. I've never done a plan, which I'm like, what? Okay, I have 10 employees. I've never done a plan. How do I bring them into this? Oh, gosh, that's so much fun. So here's the deal. Um, <laughs> first off, um, I would recommend that you go back and listen to the radio show interview that Michelle did with me on Friday. Um, and it's the difference between a strategic plan and goal setting plan. Because you have a team. And you have the opportunity to pull those players together and start by setting a strategic plan. And the strategic plan is where you get together and you say, where are we now? Where are we going? And how do we get there? And a strategic plan really starts to talk about, you know, what's our mission? What's our vision? Um, what have our financials been? And you really get to start to talk about all of you as a real team. And I think in your case, it sounds like if you've got 10 employees, you've had some real good solid success. It's a great place for you to really start and bring the team together. Then from there, I would go into your profit plan because your profit plan is going to be your goals that are going to feed into that strategic plan. But really what you're going to find is as a leader, I guarantee you've got some amazing strengths. And what I hope that you've done is you've brought together on your team individuals that are opposite of you and who really complement you as a leader, which means as you set these goals where you have a really good idea as to what's working in your organization, those other individuals are also going to have great insight on some of the areas that you don't see every day. You're going to want them to be able to offer their insight and input as to what the needs are going forward to really take your company to the next level. So having them there and you being able to really listen in and offer the opportunity for them to have ownership and buy-in is going to make the plan more powerful and it's going to make it uh, more impactful because they'll feel like it's part theirs and that they really have an ownership in the company. I really encourage you to try that. I'm still stuck on the idea there's no plan, but I'm like, really? It's like, that can't be true because we all have ideas. That's like, no, there has to be a, even a mind plan, right? I don't mean to beat up whoever asked the question, but I'm like, what? Yeah, but How you, can you, you know, we all you, have a plan. You and I both know, Michelle, that that person, I guarantee you, has had more of a plan than they realize. They probably just haven't done it in such a structured way that we're talking about it today. That's so true. Yeah, I'm not dead. I'm not dissing anybody. I've met multi-million dollar businesses that go, I haven't had a plan. I'm like, oh, that can't be possible. Yeah. But, you know, 10 employees, you know, you're all that. I think it's, it's just a matter of being, in my opinion, just more purposeful, right? I mean, what are you trying to do and what are you trying to, you know, we all want to be more profitable and more, more successful. And, and I, so and I, awesome. am, I am for hire. Keep that in mind, everyone. <laughs> well, I got two more questions. So there was one more. It's like any, any book recommendations on this? So do you have any books that you recommend for anybody who's like looking at this? And then of course, do you offer, you know, let's go back to you because here's your contact information for anybody that wants to reach you. Um, you know, I'm assuming you'll, you know, accept inquiries and calls yes. and information, right? Yes. yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so a couple of things, the book thing, gosh, you know, I have to be honest with you. I, I, I'm struggling with writing my second book calling, calling it profit plan, you know, uh, because mm -hmm. there isn't anything out there that does what I just described the way I would describe it. So, but I will tell you that there are some books out there that I think are great leadership books. And so it would just be my, me recommending books that I think are great. Um, so I don't know if that's what we're looking for here. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what we I would need some books on productivity then. I know there's, there's a couple that talk about, 
you know, yeah. kind of processing stuff, getting yeah, things well, done as a book, but that's you know, different. But you and I chatted a little bit uh, last week on uh, the 12 week, uh, 12 week, um, what's his name? You said it. And I went, oh, yes. I got to find it in my stuff. But yeah, the 12 week plan. Yeah, the 12 week plan. I do like him. Uh, he did a great podcast actually with uh, Brian Buffini, who you know I'm a fan of. Um, so that's a good book. But um, yeah, there is, I'm going to be very honest with you. If I'm going to recommend a book, I'm going to be like really excited about it. And I don't know that I've come across one when it comes to this kind of plan yet that I can really get behind quite yet. Um, wow. So this is second book. You're thinking there will be one someday soon. Is that how I leave that? <laughs> I, I, I definitely see myself doing another book. I probably will. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I love it. with that being said, um, yeah, I, I do encourage people to um, take the time out. And I'm telling you right now, we're coming up on November 1st. Now, now is the time to look at your calendar and block out the time, take it serious. I go away with a, my accountability partner. I go away with my, uh, my, I'll call it my round table mastermind group through CWI. We go away for like four days at the end of the year. We go away mid year, June, July, where we review our plans and we look at, you know, how are we doing? What are we doing? We collaborate, we support one another. We talk about, you know, what our big uh, objectives are, how we're gonna shift in our business. We write our personal goals. I am, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a planner. I'm a planner and I'm a goal writer. I started writing goals in August of 2000 and I believe in it. And I believe in the statistics that show that 98% of people who write down their goals are the ones that achieve by 10 times those individuals who don't. It's worth it. You know, take the time. Dreaming is great, but achieving is better. Woo, we're going to end on that, girl. That was awesome. Okay, Deanna, thanks. Seriously, on a serious note, thank you for being our thought leader today. And, of course, to all of our listeners and attendees, just thank you for joining us because we're going to be back in two weeks with another Women Lead webinar in our series. And I hope all of you have a great week. So thanks for joining us. And, Deanna, you are awesome as usual. So thank you. Thanks for having me.